You are listening to Information and Inspiration with Jen Julius, helping you take control of your own life by finding clarity, improving your communication, and building confidence to achieve your goals. For more information about me and my guest, you can go to jenjulius.com and check out the On the Radio tab. And if you want to engage in the conversation today, you can go to facebook.com slash jenjuliuscoaching. Today, I have Janet Kaleri on my show, and we will be discussing what she founded, a program called Visible Transitions. Janet, can you go ahead and tell us what you do, where you came from, and why you're so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Uh, well, um, yes, I'm Janet Kaleri, and I have a history of uh, being in the medical field, and I'm a certified life coach, published author. And a trained artist teacher with at-risk youth. I have been studying cognitive behavior for the last 13 years. And I recently went through my own transition, which lasted about five years. Wow. And in that time, I came up with visible transition. So, um, yeah, in that transition, I decided to take photos of what what was like, what is in, in today in, in this moment. And it helped me look at what was true for me, what was true and going on, on that day, whether I liked it or not. And mostly I didn't like it. Hmm. So, <laughs> uh, I realized what it, it was helping me do is become sincerely okay with what is right. So I began to look at these photos and the situation for example, the sink being piled up with dirty dishes for days. I took a beautiful black and white artistic photo <laughs> of these dirty dishes and pans piled up way above the sink. And I thought, wow, okay, this is just what it is. And it really helped me relax into being compassionate with myself instead of beating myself up mm -hmm. and going, yeah, you got to clean those dishes right now. You have to, you have to. I was just like, you know what? I need to be this way the last three or four days. I need to be exactly the way I need to be. And, and so I just started to relax into how I was in my process of healing. And, and there began visible transitions. Wow. Wow. And so when did you bring visible transitions to Sonoma County? In June. Woo. Yeah, really, I, I was intuitively led to come up here, and I moved up in June, and, and uh, honestly, it's just, it's been a big flower blossoming. Uh, the community is receiving my program very well. The people have been more than accommodating, more than ecstatic about what I'm doing with the young kids, and I've been led to one person after another, including you and sitting here in the radio studio. And, and honestly, it, it's been a transition that has been super, super magical and just full of flow and, and wonder. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I know you've got some really exciting stuff going on with the program, but could you tell us a little bit more about maybe some of the activities that are involved or as you've described a lot of the, a lot of the benefits you say have been proven and endorsed, right? By leaders in the academic science and spiritual disciplines. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear more about that and how, I mean, this is, this is something that it's so, it's so neat when someone creates something and everyone's like, yes, it works. And they're able <laughs> to like have some of the evidence behind it saying, Hey, yeah, this is why this is awesome. And these are the benefits that it really does show. A lot of healers often don't realize that that's actually still pretty important, especially in our wonderful American Western culture. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. They always, people want to see numbers and stats. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I do have a science background and I'm, I'm a very curious person and have a, a need for, for discovery, that process. So it works out really well for me. Yeah. Um, sure. So what I'm doing is I'm helping young people, uh, when they're feeling challenged in a transition, a life transition could be a death and illness, homeless, moving from a country to a city, mm. parents, divorcing, recovery, boyhood to manhood, 
sexuality where someone discovers they're bisexual or they want to change their gender. So all these transitions are fundamental. Those are big ones too. They're big ones, but yeah. they're always happening, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I could even see a transition being like elementary to middle school, middle school to high school. Absolutely. Or transitioning from being, you know, getting all A's to now realizing high school is way harder and you're really struggling to accept that you need to work way harder or something, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah really. All the f- transitions that, that you can think think of and it's it, it just depends on the person whether they are having a hard time with it or not or the external forces at, as well. So what we do, so how it started was, okay, charting their progress with photography. So all you listeners out there, I know you've been through a transition or you're going through a transition. And if not, you're a liar. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Welcome to my show. (laughs) Welcome to Fundamental 101. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. It's it's not too early for me to have attitude. Everyone, anyone that listens to my show is used to this. I love it. I'm from, I'm from Boston. so You know, I have a lot of people asking if I'm from the East Coast. I've had yeah. so many people ask. Do I have an East Coast attitude? Yes, you do. Really? <laughs> You'll have to tell me more later. Okay. <laughs> we'll transition back. Weird. Because I'm a total California girl. I don't know. All Weird. Right. Well, mm. it works. It works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll rock it. So, <laughs> okay. When you think you're not making progress in your transition and your shoulders are tight and you have anxiety and your confidence is depleted and you think there's no hope. Yes, I know you've all been there. And then once you see evidence of your progress, what happens? Your shoulders relax. You go, ah, right. You know? Yeah. Uh, confidence soars, anxiety decreases, clarity is abound and you teach clarity. So you become more clear because all that stuff in your head is is just weaning away. Yeah. Um, that's the volunteer fire department signal, I believe. Sorry. Okay. That's yeah. all right. That's another transition. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's getting, making it onto the microphone, but I hope everything's okay. Let's send a nice little, hope everything's okay <laughs> out, out there. Yeah. Setting good vibes. Okay. okay. Lots of light surrounding and protecting. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, so you can see your progress with photography. It offers evidence of your progress one click at a time. That's how it all began. And it's wonderful. Now, but I was explaining earlier about the dirty dishes. Well, that wasn't evidence of my progress, was it? No. It was evidence of what, what is. What was existing at the time. What was existing at the time. And we're all human. We're all fallible. Uh, we're, we're imperfectly perfect and perfectly imperfect. And if we can, when we look at ourselves as that and we relax into what is, it reduces the anxiety and the depression and it opens a portal for more playfulness, more childlike wonder. Right. So this is where the magic is, the childlike wonder and the playfulness. Now, what has occurred since I've begun this work is not only just the documenting and charting the progress. Now what's happening is these kids are becoming more present. Right. Holy cannoli. You know, it's being more present. What could be more wonderful than that if we had thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of people becoming more present? We would have healthier relationships. In that presence, when we are in the present moment, guess what is not there? Anxiety is not there because anxiety comes from the future. Depression is not there. Depression comes from the past. So we've got the present moment. Can we expand on that real quick? Sure. Just for people that maybe that's a new concept for. So kind of what we're talking about is a lot of the times anxiety is invoked by fear of future circumstances or future outcomes. So if we're feeling anxious, it's often due to the, the way that we're maybe worrying about something that's not yet to happen yet where depression, what Janet's talking about. And definitely Janet, please correct me if I'm wrong. I just want to expand on this. I like to help people understand maybe that are new to Mm. all this fun stuff. Depression sometimes has to do with being perhaps attached to uh, past 
issues, past circumstances, maybe things that have occurred to us or in our lives. And that's, I think, what you're referring to around the past versus future versus being present. Yes. Perfectly put. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now these kids who are at this age too, especially like age 12 to 17, it's very fragile and depression and anxiety comes up all the time. There's a lot of stress in these young people's lives. There's so many changes, constant changes. Especially nowadays, it's that there's so much more stuff happening all the time. Yeah. And, and, and that's a really good point. With the stuff and the technology, if if these kids are actually becoming more present because the presence has been taken away with the technology. There's a lot of scatteredness and and kids being unfocused and being labeled as ADD and ADHD and don't even get me going there. But um, in in the realm of all that going on and the kids still becoming present, that's a wonderful result of of, of this work. I'm super excited about it. Yeah. (laughs) And... Then, um, well, for example, so this Saturday I'm going to be at the successful brain fair in Santa Rosa. And I was invited by Chance Massaro, who's a brain expert. And he was so excited about my work. And after doing my own research and talking with him, another amazing result is that the kids are learning. Mm -hmm. So exactly what's happening is they are creating new neurons in the hippocampus. Each time they take the camera and they they capture a moment, they're noting a value. And I'll, I'll get into that. So they're noting a value. And each time they note a value, they're, they're making new neurons. Mm-hmm. And they are supporting learning with those new neurons. These particular new neurons are maintaining integrity. Hmm. And they're not being overcome by the old neurons who kind of sit there and and uh, can make it difficult to create or change a habit or a pattern. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. All right. We'll be right back. Just a quick note to our listeners driving around the sirens you heard is about half mile up Coleman Valley Road is a truck on fire. So if you're driving around, it's going to be a while before you get to Coleman Valley Road. Coleman, 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 Coleman Valley. Coleman Valley Road? Okay. Okay. There's a truck on fire? Yeah. Whoa. Hauling a trailer. Whoa. Engine hope it's okay. Engine. Okay. I hope there, there's not chickens in the trailer, is That's there? What they, no, it's, there, it's a road crew. Oh. I hope everyone's safe. Yeah. It looks like everyone's safe. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. See, this is what happens at Cows. We have all kinds of community coming to let us know what's happening. I love community. Thank you. Uh Uh, Sorry about that, Janet. Oh, that's okay. So where were we? Sorry, now I'm like, well, something's on fire. And I feel like I'm just like, (laughs) well, let's get back to our interview. The hippocampus is on fire with new neurons. (laughs) Yeah, there we go. That's right. Neurons. Perfect. We're talking about neurons. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's that. I mean, I'm, I'm, that's just one, it's wonderful news. If we can help the young people create new neurons, which are supporting new habits and patterns, new creative ways of learning. That's just more goodness in the world. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So what would you say led you to combine coaching non-duality photography and working with young people and also could you define what you mean by non-duality sure well during my five-year illness which was adrenal exhaustion uh quick quickly that uh that basically removed my immune system my metabolism some brain function wow lost some relationships i lost everything that i had and um I worked really hard through a spiritual journey in, in, in honoring myself. So it was a great process, a transition to work on the development of trusting myself and honoring myself first, just like when you get on an airplane, put your oxygen mask on first before yes. assisting others. So the whole idea is we've got to give to ourselves first in order to give to others, and everything is relationship, yes. So if we're going to have healthy relationships, we got to be good to ourselves first. If I'm 50%, I'm only 50% with you. Uh, 
And in, so in those years, I had a lot of time to imaginate and I became clean slated because I'd mm-hmm. lost everything. The biology, the physiology of my body changed, everything changed. So I was a new person mm-hmm. and I thought, okay, what, what am I passionate about? What, what are my skills? What is next for me? Um, I, I could have died and there were mm-hmm. times where I wanted to die and my passions really delivered hope to me. And, uh, and the hope was a, a, a vision of bringing all my passions together mm-hmm. and making a contribution in the world. My, my mission is to ignite human potential. Mm-hmm. And so I just kept focused on that. And that's one of the tools that I provide to the young people is helping them with their mojo and their life purpose and really holding on to that in these times of transitions when I honestly, I left my body and I just, there were times where I just didn't want to be here anymore. Yeah. So when I, when I got to a point where I was healthy enough to move back to the San Francisco Bay area, my lovely friend, Alejandra Soroka, she developed a a small business program, four months for nine, for nine of us. And she and her mentor helped us create a business or modify a business. So I had a life coaching business. I had had a photography business in the music industry. I had been working with at-risk youth down in Los Angeles through Inside Out Community Arts. And this program helped me develop what I have right now, visible transitions. So the idea of all you entrepreneurs is to have a niche and stay focused on that niche. Well, what was my niche? Transition. Heck, I have had so many transitions in my life (laughs) and I'm a risk taker and I'm, uh, I have a lot of adventure. Um, I'm a free spirit. Love adventure. Yeah. Me too. And for all you folks who are risk takers and, and seekers at, adventurers, these tools can help you continue with that in, in a more profound way. For those of you who are afraid to, uh, experience life in that way, these tools can help you experience life once and for all that you're, you're meant to experience life here is discovery and self-expression. And so where was I? What did you, what did you say? What did you say? Cause I, we just had Janet at coffee talk last night as well. What was the thing that quote that I like so much? Oh, when expression stifled expression leads to depression, stifled expression leads to depression. I say that's so cheery, but that's, <laughs> I mean, that's not cheery at all, but it's, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And I think it has a lot of truth to it. I do too. Yeah, I really do too. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm a woman of transition. I've had a lot of personal, uh, changes myself. Um, and when I was coaching, in, in the past, which was mostly to adults, I helped them in transition as well. So that's, that's my niche. Uh, and then what were my passions and skills working with young people, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, photography, coaching, you know, I have a lot of wonderful tools in coaching world, uh, as you know, Jen, that can help people be more confident and, um, have them know themselves better because the more I know myself, the better my life works. Right. And then the non-duality, um, thank you to Christopher Harish Wallace and, uh, Christina Star Ryan for at the Matamayuri Institute. I, I was involved in a six month immersion through tantric yoga, which is not the tantric yoga most people think, but, the, <laughs> but this is the ancient Sanskrit scriptures Wow! and the teachings, which are mostly all the teachings. If you, if you look at, Bo- at Buddhism, for example, it's non-duality. So my personal de- definition of non-duality is being sincerely okay with what is mm-hmm. that is the practice of removing resistance aversions and cravings. So not trying to push things away, not trying to bring things in. And I'm not saying for you folks who are in danger out there to accept the danger. Yeah. I'm not saying that at all. Yeah. What I'm saying is look at your situation. You've attracted it. Be gentle with yourself. There's a lesson here. There's a gift. Look at that. That yeah. is how being sincerely okay with what is works. You know, I appreciate 
this so much too, because a big thing that I, I preach, I guess you could say, or teach in my coaching is the importance of choice and acknowledging that everything we do is a choice. The issue often is that sometimes our choices are on a subconscious realm, but mm-hmm. as we start to become aware of them, then we can actually start having more choice in our choices. Meaning we go, Oh, Hmm. I actually don't like this habit and I didn't even realize I was doing it, but now that I'm aware of it, I'd like to create a new one to shift it. Right. (laughs) Yes. Can I, I want to comment again on this quote just because I'm really attached to it. And I wanted to expand a little bit too about what we were referring to earlier. Stifled depression or stifled expression leads to depression. And I think that, I mean, that's great and it rhymes and stuff, but I think if we expand on that more, stifled expression leads to all kinds of things, depression, anxiety, disorders, diseases. And I mean, I can definitely attest to that from how I was living my life a few years ago, just really trying to be this certain type of person. And I was having really bad anxiety and just like all the time, really freaking out and unsure about things and da, da, da. And what I ended up realizing is that I totally was not completely in alignment with what I was really supposed to be doing as far as my purpose goes, as far as honoring myself and who I am and what I wanted. And as soon as I made some significant changes, which sometimes one of the things that influence us the most is who we're surrounding ourselves with. Mm -hmm. So people might want to consider that Mm -hmm. as soon as I made a significant change by ending a very long relationship, my anxiety was gone in two days. Uh Isn't that interesting? Very. So it's, it's interesting to really notice that if there's something going on in your body, it's not always perhaps something that, well, how, how can I say this? Cause I don't want to sound too off color, <laughs> <laughs> but, <you are. laughs> but I kind of am. So I guess what I want to say is sometimes the solution is much simpler than we realize. Sometimes the anxiety or the discomfort or the depression or the bad feelings go are affecting us because it's our body and spirit trying to warn us, change something now, get the heck out of this situation, right? Sometimes our intuition will pop up and maybe a little voice in our head will say, for example, don't take the freeway home, Jen. This was eight years ago. Why the heck are you taking the freeway? Why are you taking the freeway? Five minutes later, I said, stupid voice, shut up. And I'm in a nine car pileup. Oh yeah. So figuring out how to honor ourselves, our body, our intuition, what our body signals are telling us and then figuring out if it's more of a physiological issue because sustained imbalance can cause physiological issues, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's all a message though. So what I like to put out there to folks is no need to become a victim of your body and the symptoms it's it's giving you a message as jen is saying it's there's a misalignment right so look at it here here we go again being sincerely okay with what is be in be in control like you are in control of that look at it observe it don't right. judge or criticize look let yourself relax into it and then you can hear what your body is trying to tell you you can mm-hmm. feel what it's trying to tell you yes and you can discover what's going on. And yeah. sometimes it's really simple. It's something that's super, super simple. And that we like to complicate things. Yeah. <laughs> like if you're feeling depressed, it could be your sugar intake. Yeah. You know, it yeah. could be something as simple as that. Not saying it's easy to change, change the habit, but with the, the, me- the, me- the methodology that I have, it makes it easier to change some habits because again, we are, we are creating new neurons. Even in adults, we, we are cre- creating the new neurons. Because our brain can always be shifting and growing and changing. Mm-hmm. Always. And learning. Yes. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. Don't That's part of the adventures. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, well, <laughs> and we can also talk about heavy metal poisoning and yeah. inactivity, but we can say that for another show. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of shows to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about exactly how does photography support Or what does it have to do with transition? As I was alluding to earlier, for example, um, this process started out with charting the the progress. Right. Uh, So, again, we when we see the the progress, we become more confident and more relaxed and more at ease and can move forward with more excitement and joy in the change. So anyone can do this. They, they can take a picture. For example, you, you can do a before and after photo of yourself or your body. If you are in a transition of changing 
your body. Right. Or if you're ill or you're, you just hired, um, uh, private, uh, what, what, what are they called? Personal trainer, <laughs> personal trainer, sorry. <laughs> uh, personal trainer, for example. So you can do that. And that's pretty simple. Now, what, what I do again is, is I, I interweave some coaching skills and the non-duality te- teachings into the f- photo- photography. For example, one of the processes that I, I work on the kids with is to determine their, um, their felt experiences, what, what kind of felt experiences are important to them. Each of us has our own u- unique experiences that we need to get met on a regular basis. Ba- basis. So for example, mine is, is discovery. So I, I'm, I'm a student, I'm going to school, uh, online, uh, the people I work with, I get, I get to discover people. I like to go for drives and not know where I'm going, or I'll go hiking on paths that I don't know where they, they lead to. So that's an example of, of discovery being met, I think in a healthy and constructive way. Hmm. So that's interesting. That makes me think about how <clears throat> I do a lot of work with values with my coaching. Yes. And one and helping people actually figure out what they are, mm-hmm. right? And my core three values are honesty, respect, and fun. Mm-hmm. And it makes me think of what you're just describing, how I am a little bit known for being a little wackadoodle, but in a fun way. And it's because I really try to make every single thing I do as fun as possible. Like I'll get so excited about the simplest things or to some people, it's the simplest thing. That's maybe even a lame thing. I don't know, but I get so excited about it and it becomes so fun for me. Like just a trip to the, you know, the gas station or the smoothie place can be a super fun adventure. Perfect. You know? Yeah. Yeah. it's a great example of how we, we all have our own unique needs and we get them met. Yes. Another example would be um, a 13-year-old girl who has a need for safety and belonging, a sense of belonging. These are all felt experiences that I'm, I'm talking about, which, which can be values, but they can be different. So, right. Because trust isn't really like a felt experience. You know? Right. I mean, it can be, but that's not where I'm going here. So... So a 13-year-old girl could need, ha- have that need for safety and belonging. She, she may join a gang. And it's so, a great way to get those needs met. She's getting the needs mm-hmm. met, but in a destructive... And yeah. she's, not, she's not conscious yet of those needs. So what I do with the photography is I help these kids determine what those needs are. And then I help them go find constructive ways of materializing these experiences. Now the photography comes in where it, they go. So we'll go on a photo walkabout or during the week in between our set, our sessions, they've got to get really creative and take photos of things that represent these felt experiences like discovery or community belonging, accomplishment, control, power, fun. So they get to go out and take photos or create a scene and take a photo of that scene to them that represents those experiences. Yeah. Because in the end, at the end of this program, they get a photo journal and this journal is a lifetime access to what worked for me in transition. I am so, I really appreciate you explaining it like that too, because one of the tools on my five super easy tools to feel happier now worksheet is to have an album in your smartphone for your happy pics. And what that's all about is choosing pictures that immediately evoke a really strong, happy memory. And I think that people, all that, those cliches, you know, pictures worth a thousand words or whatever, you know, it has a lot of truth to it. And I think that when people recognize the power that photos can have, they can start using it as a tool for exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I mean, in my case, it's it's just for the emphasis of like being able to immediately shift your energy to a positive state. Let's say something just made you mad. Go look at one of your happy photos that immediately makes you laugh or giggle or smile or something, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. But for what you're talking about, having things that document the different needs or the different uh, f- felt experiences that you described it, I think it's very... It's a really interesting method to be able to also utilize photography, which is a fairly simple method, to something that can actually have quite an impact on our state of mind and our well-being. Indeed. Yeah. And and 
we we don't need to be a photographer to do this, you know. And, and we and all have phones these days. A smartphone or a pocket digital camera or a, an old film camera or a, a disposable camera. So, um, and there's no rules. Like there are no rules to the photography about composition or lighting. There's no rules at all. Yeah. The only rule is is to document what you value in that moment, a feeling, a thought, an yes. emotion of, for example, a felt experience. Now then, uh, when it comes to the non-duality segment, um, and th- this is really the, the foundation of the teaching, uh, because just imagine that you as the, li- the listener can get to a place where you you have less craving for things to be different and you have less aversion and less of that those thoughts of of resistance and and resentment imagine how much healthier your your body will become and your relate relationships and yeah. you know there's just a joy there cuz your head isn't full of all that stuff so stuff yeah um so here's an example of of a non-duality approach and and compassion as well is is going to is naturally incor- incorporated in here. So, um, for example, this is an example I use. So, say you're in a household. You're a kid. You're in a household where the refrigerator is generally bare, or it 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 contains mostly food that is not healthy, and you are nutritionally deep. Depleted. So say you're a kid and you're in a home and that's the case. So put yourself in that position for a moment. I would have you open the refrigerator and take a photo of that bare refrigerator, of that refrigerator full of yucky food. Then I would have you practice looking at that photo and not judging it, not criticizing it, not trying to make it different Mm -hmm. practicing just being with it like okay so this is what it is and again i am not condoning uh being okay with starving or being depleted in a, a nutritional way i'm not supporting that what i'm supporting is the magic of looking at something as it is as it truly is and being neutral with it, observing yeah. it. Because what's going to happen, folks, is once you get... Look, I have chills already. Once you get to that point, the criticisms, the judgments, the wanting to make it different is going to start to fall away. When that's happening, you might not even be aware of when it's happening. What's, gonna, what's going to occur in that is there's going to be more clarity in the head, Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're creating an opening for ideas, Mm -hmm. solutions, listening to your intuition, which is always going to give you a solution or an idea or, or an answer. Can I real quick for people that think the, even the word or phrase intuition is a little bit too hippy dippy woo woo. I want to, I want to challenge that because actually there's some pretty significant research out there. I should try actually try and find it so I can quote it better. That actually validates that some of the most successful business people attribute a lot of their success to being in tune with their intuition Mm -hmm. and being able to make their decisions more from a, a more intuitive standpoint. You know, this is true and it's a fact. And, and I tell you, folks sign on the dotted line based on their gut. Mm -hmm. The million dollar line is, is signed based on the gut. So we, so we can use gut if people are more aligned with that word. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. I just wanted to touch on that really quick. Sorry. I, I appreciate that. Uh, okay. So you're, you're at, you're at this point where, you're relaxing into what is and your body starts to relax and your brain starts to relax. It opens up again, the solutions, the ideas, listening to your gut. Now I'm not saying it's going to happen in a day. It could Mm -hmm. be weeks, Mm -hmm. but every single day is a step towards creating what you say is most important. It's a step towards the light at the end of of the tunnel. So 
last night we, we, ha- we had a discussion about this at, co- at Coffee Cats. And I, I just want to make the point again, like, this is not about being okay with being in danger, being abused, being starving, none of that. I'm, I'm speaking to looking at the situation in a moment. Mm-hmm. This is just one moment at a time, mm-hmm. okay, because all we have is, is the moment. Seeing it for what it is. And, you know, when you, you're upset and you have a lot of resistance and resentment and you're angry and you're just fueling that fire, you're just and you're putting more, you're, ma- you're making that fire bigger. <laughs> so it's like I make real that to which I put my attention. So if you're like throwing fuel at this fire, all this resistance, you're going to increase the, si- the situation. You're, you're, you're going to perpetuate the situation. Right. So I'm talking about the opposite of that. Yeah. Don't give fire to what you're frustrated with. Yeah. Just observe it. Yeah. Observing it does not give it fire. <laughs> Can I give kind of a mini testimonial to that yes. and also to even using photography? Yes. I was on my way to Songbird the other day and my belly had been a little funny. I was having some energy shifts happening and my, it was going through my, my gut and, uh, I had made a really awesome smoothie. I was on the phone with someone and I look over and I go, ah, <laughs> stuff that I can't say on the radio. And they're like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I said, my smoothie's all over my car now. Uh, and my, almost my entire smoothie, probably almost like 20 ounces of it all spilled out. Uh, right. But as soon as I went, ah, I looked and I went, Oh my gosh, how convenient. It all <laughs> spilled into my cup holders. <laughs> and I was so excited for the rest of the way because I'm like, well, at least I have about four ounces of smoothie left and it's all in my cup holder. And I see like my little stress juice like floating in there and one of my cords kind of dangling in there and some business cards all soaked up. And I'm like already like, oh, and I'll just be able to like soak napkins in smoothie and then throw the napkins away. And when I get to Songbird, they've got plenty of paper towels and it's going to be totally fine because I can just clean it up. And look, there's only a little drop over here on the e-brake. That's great. And I get there and I'm just like totally fine with cleaning up my smoothie out of my car. Right. <laughs> and I realize there's a bunch of smoothie stuck behind the little thing that covers the cup holders. And I'm like, Oh no, I can't get behind there. Open mind saves the day. Little bottle of water, pour it down the side because it's just going to go back into the cup holder and not damage anything. <laughs> so I cleaned it all out, gave it a bath. And now my cup holders are cleaner than when I bought the car. <laughs> Right. And I took a picture of it while it was a disaster. And now when I look at it, I'm like, you know what? I did a darn good job making that. Okay. Right. Cause I could easily freak out. And how would that have helped? It would not have. Yeah. Then I would have just probably been more mad and spilled stuff all over, or splashed it all over, you know, but I just went, Oh man, I can totally fix this problem. You know, no, not a big deal at all. Well, that brings me to the childlike wonder and the playfulness so that that's what I think that you, you had, which, which helps yeah. you relax yeah. about the situation. And find the solution. you found the solution. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? that? An awesome story. Yeah, yeah. In fact, here, yeah, I'm gonna, you took a photo. I'll, I'll pull up the picture for you so you can enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe I'll even... I think Janet put a post on Facebook. And let me see real quick. I think if you go to Janet Cleary on Facebook or if you go to Jen, or facebook.com slash Jen Julius yeah. coaching, you'll be able to uh, find that link. And I will go post the smoothie disaster picture. <laughs> Here you go, Janet. See that? Oh, I love it. That's remarkable. A smoothie disaster, <laughs> but not for long. <laughs> so you can find that. Okay. Anyways, before as we were after. saying, before and after. Well, I didn't take an after picture. Maybe I should have. Yeah. 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 I'll blame all the dirty stuff on my car on the smoothie, even though it's obvious there's more dirt than just smoothie. But anyways. <laughs> As we were saying, getting back to, <laughs> but that, but that's a great exam example of, of being okay with what is like, there's nothing that you can do about it except for what you can do about it. Right. And what you can do about it is first just have fun with it or have some childlike wonder about it so that everything relaxes. And then the solution comes like boom, boom, boom. Right. Yeah. All the solutions just came to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it was oh, okay. Because yeah. you, because you could have ruined your entire day. Oh, I could have freaked out super bad. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> That's sometimes I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't I want to make sure that we touch on what we were going to share with people about 
how people can really use photography to is that maybe you could give a couple really clear tips, like maybe some action steps as how they could use photography to, it, we've been talking about it all morning, but yeah. be sincerely okay with how things are, become more present and develop more self-compassion. So let's maybe give a couple minutes on how could someone today use their smartphone or use photography to be able to do those few things. So maybe they're having something challenging going on in their life right now and they're having a hard time being okay with how things are or feeling present or having any self-compassion. Maybe there's a lot of blame and guilt. How could they take steps to be able to feel better from that stuff by using photography? Great. Well, let, let's start with compassion. Mm. So maybe you are, um, you're overweight or underweight and you're, you're work, you're working at, at changing your body and becoming healthier. You could take a photo of you, your face, your body right now. And most likely you don't like it because you, you're wanting it to change. So for example, if you're not happy with the way it is, take a photo, look at the photo every single day. Yeah. Look at, there's always something there that, that you admire, but that's fine. But you know what? I want you to look at the photo of yourself and I want you to just be neutral. Can you practice being neutral? Like not pointing out the flaws, not pointing out the wrinkles, not pointing out, oh, I wish my hips were about an inch smaller. Just look at the beauty. All right. This is, you're, you're an amazing vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I mean, where's the magic and the childlike wonder in that? Yeah. Go back to when you were a kid. Do you think you s- stood in front of the mirror and criticized yourself? No, you were all wonder, wonder, mm. wonder, wonder. Take that picture and get into the wonder. Go back to your childlike nature. So that's an example that is going to develop compassion because it is absent of criticism yeah. and judgment. Uh, let's see. So the non-duality I've, I've explained, but again, well, maybe your child is in school and your child's not doing well. So you could take some photos of the report card that has some notes on it or, you know, a C, a grade C. And then you take photos of your child's progress. Maybe they've come home with a better grade on a test. Mm -hmm. Capture that. Capture whatever shows progress with this child in their math class, for example. Then the next time they get a report card, more than likely the grade is going to be better than a C. You, you can capture that. So there's all these like before and after type of photos yeah. that, that, that one can do. And again, um, when, when you see the progress, it does, it does reduce the anxiety and it does help develop compassion because you're like, oh, I am making progress. Yeah. And that in and of itself develops self-compassion. Right. Right. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, time flies when you're having fun. We only have about 10 minutes left. Okay. I know. So is there something that you still wanted to touch on during our time together today? And then I want to make sure that we have an opportunity for you to tell people how they can find out more information about you. Um, yeah. Oh gosh. There's you so... want to describe a photo walkabout or? Uh, yeah. I will describe a photo walkabout. Okay. For example, one of my clients, uh, w- one of his felt experiences is community. He has a, a regular need to experience community. And by the way, whatever our needs are, it's up to us to create it for others so that we can actually have the experience ourselves. So if you're one that um, has a driving need for community, create it for others. Cause then you're automatically creating it for yourself and know right. it's not selfish. It's actually selfless. <laughs> I want to make that point. Yeah. So he and I were walking in the park and we had discovered that community was one of his felt experiences. And in the park was this big meadow of that long wheatgrass. And at the top of the wheatgrass is, are the heads. I, I, I guess you call them the 
they look like little heads. So, <laughs> so, you know, that thick sprouted part. So he looked over and he said, oh my goodness, there's thousands and thousands of people. Here's all their heads and these are people. And so he, he squatted down and he took a photo of this meadow of this tall grass with all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. And so that to him, it represented community. So he can look at that photo and say, oh, okay, community is important to me because we do tend to forget what's important yeah. to us. Yeah. And, and then we can remember how to create that for ourselves in a, in a healthy and constructive way. Um, let's see. So, so the photo walkabout is just that we'll, we'll have a discussion. We'll, we'll work on certain areas and then we'll go and, and take photos. And then during the week, the client ha- has a practice at, at, as well. But some of the photo walkabouts are also spontaneous. So for example, I, I took a client to, to Armstrong Woods mm. and we just had a conversation and it was, uh, intuitively guided. Mm-hmm. And then we would stop, we would stop when she was moved to take a photo and suddenly she took a photo of a redwood tree or a piece of bark or, so, or something abstract. Mm-hmm. And, and the abstract photos, by the way, uh, are really magical f- for representing a value in that moment, the yeah. feeling of thought, the emotion, yeah. the felt experience. And so in the moment she, she took a photo and then that, um, in that moment she, she had an insight. Mm. And so now we have a new insight, Mm -hmm. a new learning. And of course the new neurons are being created right in that moment. Sure. And we can, we, we can witness that. And so Mm -hmm. then, so then we have a discussion about what was, uh, what just came up for her Mm -hmm. and we have a new learning and then we can go and take more photos of that. Wow. So that's a photo walkabout. Wow. And it's always different. So it's, it's hard for me to pinpoint it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I'm so glad that we got to be here today and share this. Likewise. But photography, I think, is just magical for most people. You know, I think there's something really sacred that people know is there. Like there's something sacred about being able to capture a moment and capture a memory as it is at a given time. It's so precious. And even, I mean, if, even if you think about like some of the most beautiful pictures you've seen, sometimes they might be like action shots, right? Where maybe people don't realize the photo's being taken Mm -hmm. and you can see the genuineness and the essence of that experience and moment. So I just, I really appreciate how you've been able to share with us the value that can also be held in this method. Thank you. Yeah. It's really super, super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us, um, maybe if you have a couple events coming up, you can tell us where those might be at, but also if you have a website that you'd like to tell us about, how can people find out more information about you and visible transitions? Okay. Um, they can either go to Janet or visible transitions.com. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. It's really been a pleasure. (laughs) Yeah, it's been really fun, Jen. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm really excited about this work. So any chance I get to spread the word, um, I I greatly appreciate it. Perfect. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for listening to Information and Inspiration with Jen Julius. For more information about me and to check out some of my previously recorded shows, you can go to jenjulius.com or like me on Facebook at facebook.com slash jenjuliuscoaching. See you next time.